Hi, this is Doug Wilhelm, the author of The Revealers and its new sequel, True Shoots. This is focal point four in the curriculum resource for working with True Shoots. As you know, if you have followed along with the first three focal points and read the pieces that go along with them, uh, Russell, the narrator, once again in this book, he's an eighth grader now, has begun by describing a prank that two of his friends, Cam and Turner, two eighth grade boys, one of whom, Turner, is a avid young filmmaker with a site on YouTube. These two boys have played a prank in the lunchroom on the most popular girl in the eighth grade, a girl named Lauren Payne. They call her the Ice Queen. And she is ruthless about keeping her popularity. She'll spread a rumor about anybody, and she's very good at it. Uh, the boys decide to get her, so they play a prank that caused her to uh, spill blue Powerade, actually leak it from a hole that they secretly poked in her Blue Powerade at lunch, uh, and, and when she goes to drink, it goes all down her top, and Turner, with his video cam uh, secretly inside the pocket of his sweatshirt with a hole cut in the pocket, he videotapes this embarrassing thing, and they post it on YouTube. Uh, in um, Focal Point 2, Lauren the Ice Queen and her best friend Serena they have to take revenge for this because they are the top girls and these two boys are nobodies that have just humiliated them, humiliated Lauren with a prank on YouTube. So, these girls do what they do best. They spread a rumor using text messaging as the main tool, which is, which is what they do, what they're very good at. They make up a rumor that the two boys who made the video, uh, Russell's friends Cam and Turner, have been seen making out, kissing with each other, that they're a couple these two boys. And this is totally untrue. It's totally made up. But of course, like a lot of spicy rumors, it flashes all around school. Everybody forwards it to everybody else. And when Cam uh, sees this the next morning, he sees who forwarded the rumor to him. And it's a boy named John, a very popular athletic boy. Uh, you may remember him if you've read The Revealers. And Cam attacks John and puts him in, basically puts him in the hospital for a day or two. Um, it's a it's a pretty harsh scene, and I read that in Focal Point 2. Okay, so in this one, um, sometime farther along the story, Turner and a couple of other kids has have made a movie of a basketball game, a one-on-one -on -one basketball game that Russell and his friend Chris have organized to get these two boys back together. The two boys are Cam, the one who attacked the kid for spreading the rumor, and John, the one he attacked. It turns out both of those boys are talented basketball players. And uh, so Russell and his friend Chris, to try to work this out and make things okay, have brought them together on a Saturday morning to play a one-on-one -on -one game and try to work it out. And in fact, this has worked. Um, uh, like a lot of guys, they had a problem, they work it out, and they do it on this on the uh, basketball court. But Bethany, who you may remember from the Revealers, shows up with Turner to film this for a project they want to do. And they film this encounter, which horrifies Russell. They film this game, and they make a movie out of it, uh, and they post it on YouTube as in Turner's new film. And this film is very, very well done. It's very creative, very powerful. But it also tells a personal secret. Uh, in the film, uh, at the end of the game, the two boys, when they finish their game, and they're all sweaty, uh, Cam has lost his dad. His dad is a soldier and he's been killed in Afghanistan. And this is a secret that Cam has not told anybody um, and doesn't know how to talk about it. And John, the other boy, knows because Russell told him. And that, and that was part of the reason John was willing to do this, because he realizes why Cam was really so angry. So the, the two boys now are talking about this and Bethany films it and puts it on YouTube. And, uh, and Cam has a very emotional reaction when this subject comes up. So, what I'm going to read is Russell describing the end of the video, and then Russell's very powerful, kind of inspired reaction to watching it. And this is on page 140 of True Shoes. Now the film gave the game, highlight by highlight, with Bethany letting you know as the score as the action jumped from one smooth fake to the next banging basket. Turner had been everywhere, ducking in for angles, zooming to catch an expression at a critical moment, drawing back to get the whole drama of a hard shot that tied it. It was like watching a really good game, except with jump cutting to keep the tension up and with a story. Then, 
it showed the confrontation. That stuff made me crazy, Cam said, but I get that you didn't start it. No, nah, said John. So that was stupid too, what Cam, Cam said. What I did, no doubt. John shrugged. So we cool, Cam asked? Yeah. Check. From the video. It's game point. John is up 14 to 13, win by two, and Cam loses the ball off his foot. John gets it, and his fake makes Cam stumble slightly. The camera catches this, and the final action unfolds in slow motion. The two guys racing to the basket, both going up high. John lifting his finger roll just beyond Cam's straining fingers. Turner catches this in a perfect close-up. A white hand, a black hand. The ball slips through the net. Next, Bethany is on camera with the guys, asking if they're friends now, and the guys giving each other gentle grief. Bethany asks how Chris made this happen, and John says, I heard about his dad. Tension. Hell man province, Cam says. Hell man. John tries to say the right thing. He did it for you and me, you know? When Cam boils up and almost spills over, the camera zooms in to catch the glisten of tears in his eyes. After Cam has turned and stalked away, there is silence. Turner lets it last for several seconds. At last, a new, deep music comes up in the silence, inside the footsteps of a boy walking away and everyone else just breathing. The sad, sweet music that Emily made swells up and fills everything, and now it stops. Bethany stands alone on the court. This is Bethany Demir, coming to you from a place every middle schooler knows, a place that kids hear called Darkland. Emily's music rises, pushing up louder and louder as the camera returns to Cam disappearing up the road. Then, one last time, the music stops. The screen goes dark. I sat for a long time, just staring at the screen. What they did, it had really hit me. This film was something. I wasn't quite sure how I felt about it. I felt a lot of ways, but it was something. I felt the way you do when you watched a really good movie. I mean a really good movie. When, you're, when you sit there staring as the credits roll and you're still right there and so are the feelings and you'll carry them through the lobby and out into the street, into your life for a while. The phone buzzed three times. It was Elliot. Did you see that?